A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you and we bless you for this opportunity to give me that glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Knowing a friend is a message that talks about you knowing who is your friend. It's true. We have many people around us who call them friends. By this message today, I want you to know that everybody is not your friend. Amen. Everybody is not your friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody is not your friend. So whom we can call, according to a man here, hi, bye. Hi, bye-bye. They are friends. We have casual friends, common interest friends, because you are in the same class, you are in the same profession, you are in the same neighborhood. You call them friends, true or false? Yes. Mutual friends. If you like no true friends. But I want to tell you that your true friends are not many. Amen. Your true friends are not what? Many. They are known. Amen. What? In the course of my getting meat to this message this morning. I sat everywhere and I stumbled into these few points I want to make this morning. Amen. I stumbled, to, uh, stumbled on them and uh, I felt it is good that you hear it this morning. Amen. Amen. Knowing a friend. Who is my friend? What do I want from my friends? My friends, what do they want from me? We should be able to answer these questions. For you to say of the truth, this is your friend. And also, you know, we are children of God. Amen. For you to say somebody is your friend, it must be of God. It must, that, that person must have your belief. You must have the same spirit. You must have the same faith. You know, in our Sunday school this morning, we were talking about marriage. And I heard the teacher was saying, before you marry anybody, this person must be having your belief, your faith, your interests. Hallelujah. Because light and darkness don't move together. Amen. Unbeliever. Unbeliever cannot be a friend. Well, I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty, the mechanics of friendship today. But all I just want to prove to you today, for you to go home with, is that there are some characteristics you need in people before you declare them as friends. Number one, you may like to do, take this. Amen. Number one is this. Job chapter 2 verse 11. Job chapter 2 verse 11. Are you all there? It says, 
When just three friends, Eliphaz, the Terminite, Bidat, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namatite, heard about all the troubles that had come upon him, that is Job. They sent out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. These are Job's friends. Job chose them as friends. When Job was in trouble, what did they do? The Bible says they went to him to sympathize and comfort him. That is what we need in friendship. Comfort and sympathy when we have a need for them. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Number one, a friend is one who sympathizes and comforts. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, will you not be happy when you are in a situation and your friends or somebody comes around you to sympathize and comfort you? Will you be happy about it? Amen. Anybody that does that to you is your friend. Hallelujah. Number two, Job chapter 16, verse 20. Job chapter 16, verse 20. Quickly. My intercessor is my friend as my eyes pour out tears to God. A friend intercedes and pray for his or her friend. Our prayers go a long way in wiping, wiping the tears of our friend. Do not think that your prayer will ever go in vain. Job chapter 42 verse 10. The Bible says, After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made him prosperous again. And gave me twice as much as he had before. When you pray for your friends, God will bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when your friends are in situation and you have that goal to pray, this morning God is telling you, don't venture to believe that that your prayer will not uh, be answered. It must be answered because your friend is your intercessor. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. People praying for you. I just heard, I was sleeping yesterday, and somebody phoned me something after three, that the husband was dying in the hospital. I, I didn't allow her to finish what she was saying. Having gotten the message, I, instead of talking, I turned into prayer. Shout hallelujah. Amen. In fact, after prayer, you could hear that the voice of the woman turned to normal uh, state. She became stable by the reasoning of that prayer. Praise the Lord. I want you to know it is very, very important that you should learn how to pray for your friends when they are in trouble. Amen. 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 When they are sick, you need to pray. Pray. If you see a friend sick, don't go there and be sick with him. As a child of God, you need to pray. That is evangelism. When you have a friend that is sick, he's in situation. I'm praying one for that matter. All that you own that person among God. The priority, the primary assignment for you, for that person, is to do what? Is to pray. Prayer is the first aid. Of any given situation. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three. Proverbs chapter 17. You find it? Proverbs chapter 17. Are you out there? Proverbs 17. And number three. Verse 7. Verse. Proverbs 17 9.
Hallelujah. It's talks about he who covers over an offense promotes law. A friend covered the multitude of his friends and sin. Amen. Covered the offense of his friend. Forgive his friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. A friend is one who covers the offense of his friend. Uh, somebody, uh, is somebody listening to me at all? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If you are a friend to your friend, one thing you must do to maintain, to retain, to sustain that kind of relationship is forgiveness. Any relationship you don't find forgiveness is not sustainable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, if you are heaven and wife, you don't forgive one another. You cannot sustain that marriage. Amen. A friend covers not a sin, not a wrong, but multitude, according to King James, of sin, of fault. That is how to know a friend. Amen. If somebody says you are a friend to him or to her, we are he, he or she does not forgive you. He's not a friend. If you say you are a friend, you are in a relationship with somebody and you don't forgive that person, you are not a friend. He's not your friend. Hallelujah. People are serious. Why are you serious? Am I talking lies? Eh? Hello? Am I saying something? Okay. Hallelujah. A friend forgives his friends. Hallelujah. Number four. Proverbs 17, 17. Yes. Proverbs 17, verse 17. It says what? Quickly. Okay, a friend lost all times. Ha, ah, do you see it? The bottom line is all times. It's not whether you love, but do you love all times? Proverbs 17, 17. The word of God says all times. But there are many times in our life. We have a reason why we should not love. He shows. That we are not yet maturing in the love of God, in God relationship. You can just imagine God in all us, in our relationship with Him. He continues to love us. Amen. Love loves all time. All time. In season and out of season. In the morning, in the afternoon. In the evening, love is in operation. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. If God will stop loving us one day, everybody will be out of existence, true or false. I say true or false. Yes. If God will cease to love us within a minute, every one of us will be out of, out of existence. Nobody will be alive. God loves us all the time. We should find it necessary as children of God to love all times. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, a friend always loves. First Corinthians chapter 13, 4 to 8 talks about unconditional love. No matter what the mistakes or rules of a friend are, the Bible teaches us to love our friends at all time. All time. Yes. The benefit of this is that there will be no room for suppression. There will be no room for quarreling. 
that we know it from misunderstanding, then we love all times. Now, we must see that this is the love of God in our lives. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not going to love of God, love of man. God is saying today that we should cultivate his own kind of uh, love. If we have the God kinds of faith, we must have God kinds of uh, love. Number five, Proverbs 18.24 says that there are friends that are still closer than a brother. Friends are sticker or stick closer than a brother. I don't know whether I get what I'm trying to say there. Amen. What do I want to say there? Do you know? You get it. Hmm? It talks about a friend. A friend is, I mean, sticks closer than a brother. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. A friend, good friend, trustworthy friend. They are better than your brother, your biological brothers or sisters. True or false? True. That is the kind of friendship we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. I have no business with a Jewish man, but because this, because of this kind of friendship is having with us, an Eastern man has a better friend of Jesus than Eastern man. Hallelujah. You see Igbo man growing better together with an Igbo man than a Jewish a European man. Why? Because of this kind of uh, love, this kind of relationship, this kind of friendship we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. A friend is the one who can be trusted. You must trust your friend. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6. The Bible says, Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiply kisses is better. Like we have seen here, the wounds of your friend are better than the kisses. Multiple kisses. The news from a friend can be trusted, can be relied, but an enemy multiply kisses. Hallelujah. There are many kisses from your enemies. They tell you to your faith, they love you. Amen. 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 But the insult, the wounds, the, the molestation, Of a friend that you trust is better than them. Amen. 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 If a friend will slap you, it's better than your enemy coming to kiss you, coming to express the kind of love that he does not have for you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 9. He said, Perfume and Israel bring joy to the heart. And the pleasure, the pleasantness of one's friend brings from his endless cancer. Which means a friend is one who gives endless cancer. Amen. Endless cancer. Good cancer. You from a good friend. Amen. Amen. Good cancer. 
that will bring friends. Amen. Amen. The cancer of a friend is so refreshing that the Bible says it is like perfume and missing. Hallelujah. Amen. He said we should beware of those friends who cancel you for their own days. Amen. There are people who talk to you, who cancel you, giving you advice. I mean, just because of what they are going to gain from you. True or false? True. There are people who will not tell you the truth, the position of your life, so that you can be good. Good to yourself, good to your neighborhood, good to God. But they want their own selfish gain. Hallelujah. Amen. The last I have here is Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. He says, If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Hallelujah. Amen. And old and proverbs say, saying goes like this. A friend indeed is a friend indeed. A friend indeed, a friend in need is a friend indeed. How true that is. We live in a world that uses us for its own gain and then does us when our usefulness is over. Christ did not give us up when we were dying in sin. He gave his friend for us when we needed him. And that is a true friend. Shout hallelujah. Which means a friend is one who lifts up. Who lifts us up. Your friend should be able to lift you up when you are dying. Amen. Any friend that comes to you to multiply your trouble is not a friend. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. A friend should come to lift you up. Financially, a friend should come and lift you up. Socially, a friend should come and lift you up. Spiritually, when you are down, flat, your friends should come and lift you up spiritually. True or false? True or false? There's a chorus that says a song, What a friend we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I see Jesus this morning that made me to be where I am today. Please, I want us to sing this song. Sing this song with me, everybody. He brought me out from the mire clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my mouth today. I can sing Hallelujah. He brought me everybody. Can we sing it? The man replied. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul to play. And now I can sing. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus is a king. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus is a king. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus is a king. Oh glory, Hallelujah, Jesus is a king. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus is the King. Hallelujah, 
Let me just ask you this question before we close. Let me ask you this question. What are you to your friends? Hallelujah. Amen. What are you to your friend? Are you a sympathizer, a comfort to your friend? Amen. How many of us here can truly and boldly say today that for the first one week you have no time to pray and intercede for your friends? God is calling on you today to pray for your friends who is in need, who is sick right now. Hallelujah. Your friend is sick. Your friend is in need. God wants you to be a comfort. God wants you to intercede and I mean pray for your friends. Hey, how many of us here can say of the truth? If you before coming here today that you are forgiving your friend, your spouse, your brother, your sister before coming here today, God is using this opportunity to tell you to learn how to forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how to know a friend. That is how to know one that you are in relationship with. Your ability to forgive. The ability for that friend to forgive you. How many of us today love our friends, our spouse, our brothers and sisters, our colleagues, our neighbors? Always. Many times we have many reasons for not loving. Creating room for hatred. Creating things. I'm friendly. God is saying we should love all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you stick closer to your brothers in Christ than your blood, brothers and sisters? Many of us to best to take instruction from our culture, from our condition, from our tradition to operate in the church of God. Many of us think that using our time senses to operate in the house of God. Let me tell you, our relationship with God is stronger than that of our brothers and sisters to our parents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must know this that the love of God is stronger than any other love. Amen. That is why today you see an awesome man marrying Yoruba conveniently in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That is why today as a child of God you are best friend. Is a Christian from Shokoto, from Medigori. Because we have found a friend in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, you must stick closer to your brother in Christ than that of your blood brothers and sisters. That's what we're talking just now in the Sunday school. Look, let me tell you, the relationship in Christ Jesus is higher than any other relationship. Hallelujah. In marriage, the love of God should supersede. Hallelujah. It's not about any other person. It's about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. In our relationship, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about the man. It's not about the woman. It's not about any other person. But about Jesus. Amen. A Manisha man married to an Igbo, the love of Jesus. God is my witness. We are enjoying our marriage. Our marriage today. The love of Jesus. How do I know that my wife lost me? She lost me more than her own tribe. 
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want you to know, as far as you are here, you are my brother. As far as we are here, I'm your brother. We are one in Christ. Aware with all those fetish culture and tradition. Our blood today is that of the blood of Jesus Christ. Not the blood of my father, of my mother. I am born again, born into the family of Jesus. A member of the commonwealth of her is Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you trustworthy? A friend is one who is trusted. Now if you here you have a half friends. Many times they give you half break. That means they break your heart. They say they are your friends. Look around them very well. You discover, you will discover that they are your friends because of what they are gaining from you. They are not your friend because they want to lift you. They are not your friend because they want to encourage you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't. It's because they want to get something from you. That is why. You can see two people come inside the church now. They are not in the church because they want to hear the word of God. Because they want to immunize, immunize us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come and see them. Amen. Amen. You see, they want to immunize us. Immunize us. They want to give us injection. That is why they are here. Praise the Lord. They want to put their paper down. You are not forbidden. Your head is covered by your head. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have hair on your head. So it's cover your head. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The love of Christ supersedes. Every other love. You can see these people. I don't know them before. They don't know us before. But because they are children of God. Amen. Amen. They are sitting down. Happily smiling. Rejoicing and having fellowship with us. That is the love we are talking about. If they are not good friends, they will see them. If they are enemies, they will not see them. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, my dear brother and sister, a friend is the one who lifts us up. Amen. Amen. Your friend should be able to lift you when you are down. Not the one where you say, Oh, can I go to the church today? He says, Sit down. What are you doing? You were there the other day. Don't go to church today. If you don't go to church today, can you die? Your sky is coming today. He will discourage you. That one is not lifting you up. He's making you to go down dread more. That is not a friend. A friend who encourages to go and smoke. A friend who go about telling you that to womanize, to go and waste blood and waste money is not, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, a, a fish in the water cannot deny water. A priest who will discourage you in the teach of God. A friend, when we tell you that the prayer is wrong, and uh, it's it every time, that is not a good friend. Hallelujah. My friend, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 2, verse 23, that Abraham was God's friend, true of all. My friend, I want to close by saying, we must do as what I've just told you to be Abraham's children and friends of God. Amen. Amen. This is exactly what Abraham did. That God would be called him and say, You are my friend. He trusted Abraham. Amen. Amen. Abraham lifted God by go by going out of his way to sacrifice his only begotten. So, hey, God said, this is a promotion to me. God, prom- uh, I mean, Abraham promoted God. God said, you are now my friend. Next, I will tell you some of these things surrounding God's friendship. May God 
make you his friends today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, I'm happy. Yes, I'm happy. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord.